The National Broadcasting Company presents Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. Tonight, transcribed from Hollywood, another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles, and 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. the files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on fact. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, Can Death. It is 1.15 a.m., January 26, 1940. Bob Farragut, a rancher, comes awake slowly. As his eyes open, a wave of nausea sweeps over him, and he breaks into a cold sweat. He throws back the covers, staggers to his feet, noticing that his wife has left her place beside him. Uh, May? May? Where are you? May? What's the matter? Why are you out of bed? Oh, Bob. I feel so, so sick. Yeah, I feel kind of funny myself. I was just putting some water on my face. What's the matter with me? You're as white as a sheet. You better get back and lie down. <laughs> funny, I can hardly stay on my feet without holding on to something. You're all perspired. Oh, Bob, what can it be? I don't know. Unless we're all coming down with the flu or something. Kids act it kind of funny before they went to bed. I was up with them about 11 o'clock. They were complaining about stomach aches. Wait. We better go have a look at them. If they feel like we do, I'm going to call the doc. Now they, they seem to be all right now. Both sleeping. Better close the window by Petey's bed. Janet's got covers kicked off. I'll put a quilt over it. We better get back to bed ourselves. Have Doc out in the morning. Oh, I never felt so sick. Bob! What is it? What's the matter? Oh, Janet's face. Feels so funny. Bob, she isn't breathing. She feels so cold. Now, don't go getting yourself excited. I'll wake her up. Janet? Janet? Wake up, baby. Jenny! Wake up, baby! Wake up! Petey! Wake up, Petey! Oh. Petey! Oh, what's the matter with him? Doc. Gotta call the doc right away. Up! Don't leave me! Stop! May! 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 Gotta get help. Get somebody to help. Gotta get downstairs to the phone. Hi. The bodies were discovered two days later when a neighbor noticed Farragut's milk cows wandering in pain as the result of not being milked. The sheriff was summoned, along with a medical examiner who made a preliminary diagnosis of poisoning. The bodies were moved into town for autopsy, and the sheriff called for the aid of a Texas ranger. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned. Everything in this medicine cabinet seems to be innocent enough, Jace. Your deputy checked the garbage cans and refuse bins? Yeah, no empty bottle of any kind, just a few cans, vegetable peel and stuff like that. I'll need some wrapping to pack these bottles in so they can be flown to the lab for examination. Probably find what you need downstairs. Jace, I've been in office nine years. 
And this is the dirtiest killing I've ever had. You seem pretty sure this wasn't an accident. Not with kids being affected. Farragut's were mighty careful people. Yeah. Car pulling up outside. Yeah, it must be the dock with the autopsy report. No, Sid Mack. Farragut's partner in this range. Who did it, Sheriff? Sid, if I knew that, I wouldn't be standing here. You gotta do something about this. I don't want anybody getting away with it. You can post a $5,000 reward for the killer in my name. Make it 10. Make it anything I got. Take it easy, Sid. I know how you feel. Uh, Sheriff tells me you own half this place. That's right, Ranger. How come you haven't been out here in a couple of days? Well, I don't live on the place. It was just an investment to me. I got a hardware store in town, living there. I see. You know anybody who was packing a grudge against the Farragut's? Against Bob and May and those kids? It would take a madman to want to hurt them. Oh, Jace, that's Doc's car coming now. Good. Oh, why does everything take so long? Everybody's standing around waiting instead of doing something. There's no point in doing anything until you know what you're doing. When Doc tells us what killed the Farragut's, we'll have something to trace. Oh, I'm sorry, Ranger. It's all right, Mr. Mag. Howdy. Howdy, Doc. You know Sid. This is Ranger Pierce. Hello, Sid. Hello. Hey, Ranger. Yeah, the results of the autopsies are kind of surprising, Sheriff. Death in all four cases is accidental. Well, accidental? Accidental. No doubt about it. Deaths were caused by botulism. What's that? It's the result of improper home cannon. Stomach content showed the Farragut's had made their last meal on green beans, potatoes, and canned sausage meat. There's nothing in that to kill them. Yes, there is, Mr. Mack. The doc's right. Cannon meat at home is tricky business, Sid. Should be done under steam pressure at high temperature. If it isn't, uh, bacteria forms and it's plenty deadly. You sure that's what killed him, Doc? Bacteria was unmistakable, Sheriff. It was the sausage meat. Nothing else. I uh, guess we should be thankful in a way. It's nice to know it wasn't murder. Dead. Just from sitting down to a meal. And they're all dead. Well, Jace, looks like I brought you down here for nothing. I don't know, Sheriff. Looks like we've got a real job on our hands anyhow. What do you mean, Ranger? The sheriff and I have fine-combed the house. There's nothing in there that's home canned and no equipment for home canning. Hey, that's right. All we did find was one cannon jar on the kitchen drain board. Must have been washed out along with the dishes from the last meal ate. Are you sure of that? Wasn't even a steam boiler big enough for home canning. And a woman doesn't just put up one jar. She cans in batches, and the whole batch might be contaminated. Women do pass out samples of their home cannon to neighbors and friends. That jar must have been a gift. Quite a gift. Like a stick of dynamite with a lighted fuse. Somebody around here must have a pantry full of poison, and they don't know it. You mean what happened to the Farragut's could happen to somebody else? It will happen to somebody else if we don't find out where that sausage meat came from and fast. Sheriff, you better get all your deputies and a bunch of volunteers out here right away. We'll need them to make direct contact with anybody in the area who can't be reached by phone. We've got to warn anybody that may have given the Farragut's that sausage meat. I'll call them right away. Now ask the phone company to put on a staff and make calls to every listing. Right, Jase. Is there anything I can do, Ranger? Well, you got your car. You can take an area when the sheriff and I map it out. I can help you there. I'd rather use you in another way if you don't mind, Doc. Drive into town, go to the newspaper and the local radio station, ask them to get out a warning. Right. You want me to come back, then? No, you better stand by in town. And pray that we don't bring in another case for the hospital or the morgue. For five days and nights, we covered the territory, the shacks and farms and ranch houses without phones, and then doubled back on the phone listings that hadn't answered, running down the whereabouts of people away on business trips or vacations that we couldn't locate the source of the contaminated meat. If only somebody'd come forward and admit that they can to stuff the Farragut's ate, we'd know we were safe. Uh, they may be afraid of being held responsible for the deaths. Uh, it is something to wonder about. Well, yeah, we almost back to my office. Maybe one of the other men has left a report. What time is it? Almost midnight. Yeah, here we are. Oh, howdy. Sheriff Kingman. That's right. This is Ranger Pearson. Hello. What can I do for you? My name's Burton. I just came down from Dallas. I'm an investigator for the Midland and Frontier Insurance Company. We understand that you're still investigating the death of the Farragut family. Well, we're trying to find the source of the stuff that killed him, if that's what you mean. Then this isn't a criminal investigation? No. Deaths were accidental. What's your interest, Mr. Burton? 
Well, Ranger, it is unusual for an entire family to be killed, except for a highway accident or a fire, some natural calamity. And the Farragut's were all heavily insured by my company. I'm just making a routine checkup before we pay the beneficiary's claim of $30,000. $30,000? You say your company insured all the Farragut's? That's right. $10,000 each on Farragut and his wife, 5000 each on the children. All the Farragut's are dead, though. Who is the beneficiary? Mr. Farragut's partner, Sid Mack. Sid Mack? How long ago were those policies written, Mr. Burton? A uh, little over a year ago, when the partnership was formed. That's the main reason my company wanted to make certain about your investigation. It's a matter of routine for partners to insure each other, but... Uh... But this involved Farragut's whole family. Yes. However, since there's no criminal investigation, we'll have to honor Mr. Mack's claim. Uh, thanks for your time, Sheriff. Uh, just a second, Mr. Burton. Yes? If I were you, I wouldn't recommend payment of that claim just yet. But the sheriff just said that there's no criminal investigation. There wasn't a minute ago, but there is now. You are listening to Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Chase Pearson. We continue now with tonight's case, Can Death, an authentic story from the files of the Texas Rangers. In the morning, Sheriff Kingman got a search warrant for Sid Mack's house. Mack had already left for the hardware store, but we were admitted by his hired girl. She was young and frightened. She watched us in silence as we started our search and then disappeared. Nothing in here, Jase. Mm, nothing in the pantry, either. Let's try the attic. Mm. That girl scooted mighty quick, didn't she? Yeah, she probably told Mac what we're doing by now. Could have kept her here until we were through. Yeah, doesn't make any difference. He'd know sooner or later. And if anything's here, he won't be able to stop us from finding it. In this door here. We're not going to find anything, Jase. If there was more of that contaminated food, he'd be stupid to have it around. And if he did kill the Farragut's, he's not stupid. Oh, this whole job is too clever. No job is perfect. There's always a slip someplace. Let's move those crates. Okay. Uh, nothing in these things, Jays. Better look in those barrels, too. Yeah. Hey, hold it. Somebody's coming upstairs. Mac, I reckon. You and the ranger up there, Sheriff? That's right, Mac. What's the idea? Just having a look around, Mac. We've got a search warrant. Maybe you're going to need more than a search warrant. I had a call from an insurance man named Burton this morning. Yeah, we had a call from him last night. That's why we're here. I've got a legitimate insurance claim, but you've stopped it from being paid. It'll be paid in due time, if it should be paid. Is that so, Ranger? Well, let me tell you something. I think the way you stopped that claim constitutes slander. You think of any reason why I shouldn't slap a lawsuit on the two of you? No, Mac. Not any more than I can think of a reason why you insured Farragut's wife and two kids. Then maybe I'll give you the reason, Sheriff. Farragut knew I had them all insured. You can't insure somebody without them knowing it. The company will tell you that. Farragut was my friend. You understand that? My friend. Sure, I insured his wife. If he'd lost her and been left with the two kids, he'd need somebody to take care of them. And that cost money. Farragut could have insured her himself. So I did it for him. And I love his kids. I don't have any, and they, they were like my own. The policies I had on them weren't just life insurance policies. They were endowment policies, too, to pay for the education. Now, what's wrong about that, Sheriff? Nothing wrong, Mac. If what you're saying's true... Ask the insurance man. Ask him. Out at the ranch, before we found out what killed the Farragut's, when we thought they'd been murdered, I offered to put up everything I have as a reward, didn't I? Well, didn't I? Yes, Mac, you did. I'm glad you mentioned that, Mac, because it brought something to my mind. Something that's been trying to register, and you just brought it out. What do you mean? How long have you been in the hardware business? Mm, Eleven years. Why? Because when Doc told us the Farragut's died from food poisoning, from food that wasn't canned properly, he had to draw you a blueprint. You didn't seem to know anything about it. I don't know anything about it. No? Don't you sell canning equipment at the hardware store? Well, we can go over to the store and have a look, Mac. All right. So I sell canning equipment. Any hardware store does. What does that prove? Companies that make canning equipment usually put out instruction booklets, too, telling how the equipment should be used. And those booklets contain a warning about the possibility of food poisoning. Maybe they do. I never read one of them. Don't kid me, Mac. 
Man who's been handling a line for 11 years has to know the answers when customers ask about the stuff he's selling. If he doesn't, he doesn't last 11 years in the business. You're covering up, Mac. That doesn't look good. So, it doesn't look good. All right, Sheriff. What are you going to do about it? Arrest me for telling a lie? Don't be smart, Mac. I don't even know why I'm bothering to talk to you. You got your warrant. Go ahead and search. But you're not going to find anything here. No canning equipment and no canned sausage meat. So go ahead, search your heart out. Mac wasn't hedging anymore, but having him out in the open made me feel uncomfortable. He was too defiant, too sure of himself. We finished our search, but we found nothing. We started back for the sheriff's office. He knows something about those deaths, Jase. Practically told us so, right to our faces. I know. We can't prove anything. Yeah, he could have brought cannon equipment home from the store. Could have taken it any place. Then ditched it when he was finished. He'd need more than just the equipment, Sheriff. What? Hog meat? Might have bought a hog. I had one butchered at some farm around here. But which one? We checked every house in the territory once, warning them about the meat. I reckon we'll have to check them again from a different angle. Be a job. Some folks off in the backwoods keep a hog or two. We'll check them all. I'm towing a double horse trailer. We can load your mount in with charcoal in case we need him for the woods or hill country. Matter of fact, places off the beaten trail might be our best bet. I know it's going to be done, Jase, but even if we find a place, can't jail him for buying hog meat. Just the same, it's our next step. And it might be the step that starts Mac on his way to a cell. It was work. Grim, routine, discouraging work. The game of questions and answers without ever getting the right answer. In three days, we checked all the spots that could be reached by car. Then we switched to the horses and rode into the backwoods. These backwoods people are kind of tight mouthed, Jay. Yeah, so I've noticed. I guess they figure the world doesn't want to share the trouble, so they hold up back here. You see what I mean next place we come to? Crazy Annie. Crazy Annie? That's what they call her. She isn't really crazy, just kind of strange. Has a son, feeble-minded. They had him at the state asylum for a while, but he was harmless, so they let him go. Old lady came into the woods with him, and, well, they've been here ever since. They got hogs? Yeah, hogs, a couple of chickens. That's about all they have got. Oh, yeah, they got one other thing. The meanest dog in the state of Texas. Keep your eye open for him when we ride up. Don't they keep him tied? Yeah, yeah, but he chews loose. Hates everybody but the old lady and her son. Place is just through this clump of trees. Hey, hold it, Sheriff. Ooh, 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 Charlie. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Look at that. Mound of earth covered with rocks and a cross sticking up at the head. Looks like a grave. Uh-huh. Reckon Luke did that. Old Annie's son. Always burying dead birds and things. Gives them all first class funerals. Oh. Now get up, Chuck. Oh, come on, boy. Uh, there's Luke now. Luke! You scared him. He took off for the woods like a jackrabbit. Yeah, never know how he's going to act. I don't see any dog any place. No, first time I come here that he hasn't tried to sample my pants. Oh, there's the old lady coming out of the shack now. Yeah, I see her. Oh, who are you? Oh, Charlie. Howdy, Annie. You frightened my Luke. Why do you come to frighten him? We don't mean him any harm, ma'am. We just came to see you. Where's your dog, Annie? I don't want him sneaking up on me. The devil came for him. He's dead. And Luke cries for him. He's afraid in the night without the dog. Maybe you're just as well off, Annie. That hound might have turned on you sometime. Uh, how are the hogs coming? See, the sow has a new litter. Yeah, those sucklings ought to make good canning. Uh, maybe you got some canned meat that I could buy. I ain't got nothing canned. Not until we butcher. That's true, Jace. Ford checked her shells when we were warning everybody. I see. You ever give any canned sausage meat to the Farragut's? I never give them nothing. Why are people always asking me that? You know the Farragut's are dead, don't you, Annie? Yeah. If you never gave anything to the Farragut's, did you ever give or sell any canned sausage to Sid Mack? Or any hog meat, or even a live hog? Well, did you, Annie? You got a right to sell what you own. I don't know the man you talk about. Now, don't lie to us, Annie. We're friends. You know that, don't you? I never sold him nothing. I never did. He never come up here. All right, Annie. Want to write on, Jace? 
No sense trying to catch Luke. When he's scary like he is today, he can't even talk. Yeah, let's go. Goodbye, ma'am. Goodbye, Ann. Up, Charlie. Up, boy. Of course, it's hard to tell with anybody like that, Jace, but she seemed to tighten up when you mentioned Sid Mack. She did. Her hands started to work nerves. And the boy Luke ran when he saw me. Of course, he's done that before. If they can give us any information, it isn't going to be easy to get. I got an idea. Maybe a wrong one, but it's worth a shot. Let's turn back for town. Come on, Charlie. Come on, boy. Come on. You gonna tackle Mac again? No. I want to see the doctor. Well, there's a complete chapter on botulism in this book, Jace. Now... What was it you wanted to know? This food poisoning from improper canning, Doc, does it always happen? I mean, if the batch wasn't cooked the proper length of time or if it wasn't sealed under the proper steam pressure, would it necessarily be poisoned? No, not necessarily. It could be all right. I just wanted to make sure. Well, what's your point, Jez? If Mac put up that contaminated meat, he'd have no way of knowing it was bad without testing it. So since you wouldn't test it on himself... He didn't test it on anybody else, either. There'd have been another death or somebody sick enough for Doc to know about. Mac wouldn't have gambled on the Farragut's just getting sick. He wouldn't have even gotten the food to him unless he was sure it was deadly. Well, he could have tested it on an animal. Would an animal eat that food, Doc? Well, the meat would seem all right by taste or smell. Yes, yes, an animal would eat it. That's all I wanted to know, Doc. Sheriff, we're going for another ride in the woods. I think I know what for. Shouldn't take two guesses. We're going to dig up Luke's dog and send it to the lab at Austin. I want to know what that dog died from. We took Deputy Ford with us to stay on guard and keep old Annie and Luke from leaving their shack. We dug up the dog and sent it to Austin. The answer fit. Death by food poisoning. Sheriff and I rode back to the shack in the woods. Old Annie was white and shaking and her son huddled in a corner. His eyes enormous and frightened. His lips numb. Annie, believe me. Nobody's going to hurt you or Luke. But you've got to help us. You had no reason to harm the Farragut's. We know that. But we're after the man who did have a reason. I don't know. I don't know. All you have to do is tell us. Was Mac here? Did you sell him anything? Or can anything under his direction? Oh, I guess it's no use, Jace. Yeah, we can try again when we get to town. Any you and Luke will have to come with us. We're taking you in. I don't want to come back. Luke. Luke, listen to me. We're only taking you into town. I wouldn't have to do that if you or your mother answer my question. They're lying, boss. They want to take me back there. Mr. Mack says they take me back. Mack said? Wait a minute, Sheriff. Where did Mr. Mack say they were going to take you, Luke? You know where. The place where they took me before. They ain't going to take you, Luke. I won't let them. Yes, I think he means the asylum. That's what he does mean. That's the key to why he won't talk. Wait, I got a hunch. Luke. Mac isn't a good man. He killed your dog. Well, he did, didn't he? No. He was always giving me stuff to feed him. My dog died. He died. You're getting to him, Jace. We don't want to send you away, Luke. Mac lied. He's the one. He wants to send you away. No. He tried to help me. He told me who was trying to have me sent back there. It was Mr. Farragut, that's who. Don't tell him, Luke. Don't say any more. You better let him talk, Annie, because if Mac didn't kill the Farraguts, then Luke did. He didn't. He didn't mean to. He didn't know what he was doing. Mr. Mac said I should be nice to Mr. Farragut and his wife. Then they wouldn't send me away. What do you mean by telling you to be nice? He said I should go and bring him a present. He gave me the present to bring. Something nice for them to eat. Something in a jar? Something canned? Yeah, the same kind of stuff he always kept giving me to feed my dog. And my dog died, and Mr. Farragut and his lady and the little babies, they died too. And that's it, Jace. Making him an accessory to the murder of four people. I know. But with Luke's background and with a smart defense attorney in court scaring him and confusing him, Luke's story wouldn't hold up. 
Mac would get away with it. But what else can we do? You gotta find the rest of that food and prove it passed through Mac's hands. He had a batch of it. Kept feeding the dog samples until he found a jar that was deadly. Annie? Your boy's in trouble. You know that, don't you? Leave him alone. How much of that stuff did Mac bring up here? A lot. But he kept it hid someplace in the woods, except in what he fed the dog. He didn't tell us why. And after the dog died, that's when he got the jar from his hiding place for Luke to take to the Farragut's, wasn't it? Luke never knew what killed the dog till after. No. <laughs> Mr. Farragut, he thanked me and he gave me a half dollar and... The lady, she, she smiled at me, pretty. Luke, do you know where Mac hid that food? Did you see him digging any place? Did you follow him? I, I never know where he kept it. He always went over the hill, way over where it's all rock. That rock formation across the gully, Jay, is about a mile from here. Think he left the stuff there? Yeah, it wouldn't be safe for him to cart around. He had to leave it someplace. Come on. We're going to need more men, Sheriff. We may have an all-night digging party. Ford. Yeah, Chef. Just watering the horses. Well, hop on your pronto and head for the nearest ranch. Get on the phone and call for deputies. Tell them to bring shovels and keep their mouths shut about where they're going. I want them up here right away. We dug by flashlight and torchlight. Finally, we found it. A burlap sack loaded with jars of sausage meat. Canned death. We rushed back to town, and just after dawn, a fingerprint crew flew in from Austin. I held my breath. All we needed was a print. One fingerprint belonging to Sid Mack. We got it. More than one. There were sets on every jar. By that time, his store was open, and we went for him. Well, Sheriff and the Ranger, what uh, bright ideas have you got this time? Got an idea? We're going to lock you up, Mac. You can drop that smile, Mac. Luke was just as scared of us as he was of you. We know the whole story. Well, guess fellas with your mentality might believe Luke, but a jury won't. You know what the law says about a reasonable doubt? We also found a few buried samples of your canning, Mac, with your fingerprints all over the jars. Just yours. So? Like you once said, I sell canning equipment, and I handle the stuff I sell. So my prints were on the jars. Smart, isn't he, Sheriff? Regular genius. Thanks. Sorry, I can't return the compliment. You're just like all the smart ones, Mac. You just made one mistake, and it was a real stupid one. About those prints. You had to put them on the jars after they were filled, when the canning was completed. Any prints that were on before would have been boiled off. Don't go back to hammer, Mac. Don't make me put a bullet in you. Because heaven knows, Mac, I'm tempted. Wait a minute, Sheriff. I'm not resisting. I'm not touching anything. All right. Move. Better lock the door, Mac. You won't be coming back. Sid Mac was brought to trial on August 3rd, 1940. He was convicted of premeditated murder. And on April 19th, 1941, he died in the electric chair. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae is currently seen starring in the Universal International Technicolor production, Frenchie. Tonight's cast included Tony Barrett, Paul Fries, Virginia Craig, Will Wright, Ken Christie, Joe Forte, Edmund McDonald, and Don Diamond. This story was transcribed and adapted by Joel Murcott, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. Hal Gibney speaking. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Gordon McRae sings for you tomorrow evening as the Railroad Hour presents a melodic adaptation of the dramatic opera Madame Butterfly. Gordon's guest for this Railroad Hour presentation is lovely soprano Nadine Connor. And your Monday of music tomorrow also includes a concert by the voice of Firestone with guest artist Eugene Conley. 
Bill Baker asks the $64 question next on NBC. NBC.